Welcome to Big Data on Proust um, with, uh, since a long time, but I'm very excited to start off kind of a new season of Big Data on Proust with Anil Chakravarti hey, from uh, Informatica. Um, thanks for joining. My this pleasure. This morning. Usually we, um, we're asking, please introduce yourself and the proof you brought, but uh, it's so early in the morning, we decided we go for coffee and uh, refreshing water. In, um, tell me a little bit about your, your background. You have a very interesting background, um, very security focused, mm -hmm. in kind of how, how did that shape kind of your, you getting to Informatica, what are you doing there? Yeah, um, as you said, uh, I've had a deep background in security for the last 15 years. Um, I was at Symantec where I ran the enterprise security business. I've, I was at Symantec for nearly 10 years. Before that at VeriSign, mm -hmm. uh, where I was responsible for uh, product management of the VeriSign security services. Coming to Informatica, to me, was really uh, a great way to bring that security expertise to the data layer. As you know, a lot of the security world is still very much at the network layer mm -hmm. so, and creeping up into the application layer. But if you really look at where security can be most effective, it's really at the data layer because there you know what you are trying to protect, what is sensitive, what is valuable. Mm -hmm. And so we at Informatica are taking a new approach based on my background, but based also on what we see in, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, from the industry, we are taking a new data-centric approach to security. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> so I, I think there's two topics I want to talk to you uh, about today. One is kind of really securing data, mm -hmm. and one is using data to, se to secure, if right. that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, uh, it does, yeah. So, so why don't we start with the first one. Um, so what's, what's kind of your per, uh, perspective about what's going on and kind of maybe we expand it from security to overall data governance, mm -hmm. right? What's, what is really the requirement of the market? Where are the products today? Where do they have to come? Where are the shortcomings? Yeah. So let's start with the state of the art in security today. You know, there's no shortage of spending on security. If you go talk to virtually any customer and mm. you ask how much is your security budget, how much has it grown, it has grown exponentially mm. for virtually every customer. At the same time, you hear a breach every week there is a major exactly. breach, yeah. right? And so assuming there's minor breaches every day that are getting disclosed. So something doesn't add up. If there's mm -hmm. so much spending going on in security, and yet you hear of these major breaches like this OPM, the Office of Personnel Management breach that just happened, mm -hmm. what is really not adding up? So our view on that is what's really not adding up, this goes back to your securing data topic, is because the current technologies are indirect ways of protecting your data, mm. they're only, their effective, effectiveness is limited. You know, you have to say kind of this segment of the network contains valuable data, so I'm going to protect that network. But then the data doesn't have any perimeters anymore. And big data and the cloud are pushing those boundaries even faster, right? Because you have valuable data everywhere now. Mm. Um, so it's sitting in Salesforce.com, sitting on Amazon, it's sitting in any other data repository that you are building yourself. So the, the perimeter has gone away. And therefore, the technologies that were all about, hey, I want to create a perimeter, are not as effective anymore. Mm. So we believe that that approach has to change, and the securing the data has to start with basically the, uh, an approach to understanding what is sensitive and what needs to be protected. So more <clears throat> zooming in and protecting the data itself than just globally put walls up around everything. You cannot put walls up anymore, right? That's, I mean, yeah. Yeah, it's not that you would stop putting up walls, that, that would not be the right way to go, but you have to realize it takes more than that. Mm -hmm. um, so you, you, you touched on cloud. What's your perspective? Is data more secure in the cloud than on-premise? You know, I think that's actually very difficult to answer because it's a very uh, um, tough uh, description in the sense that in the cloud, if you look at the infrastructure in the cloud, it is probably better protected than an infrastructure in a typical data center, right? Because all of these are more professionally run, better organized, automated, et cetera, and therefore the infrastructure is better protected. But like we were just discussing, the data on top of the infrastructure is as open as it was in your data center, right? Mm -hmm. It's just there is no, whoever is providing the infrastructure layer does not have visibility to your data. Mm -hmm. So you could be on Amazon and if you have poor data security practices, the infrastructure sec infrastructure security at Amazon is not going to protect you. Mm -hmm. And that is really where I think in the cloud, there's one dimension that is better protected, but the data dimension mm. is as open as, or as protected or unprotected as it was in your own data center. 
Is there especially a weak link between moving data back and forth between premise and cloud? And I think you guys having interesting products around that. How is your approach to really closing uh, the loopholes there? Right, so I think there, is, there definitely is, as, as more data movement there is, the more data proliferation there is, the greater the exposure in terms of who can access the data and where the data could go. Uh, so our approach right now is building on understanding metadata. Mm -hmm. So essentially, you know, from our heritage in data integration, we've always had very good access to metadata. I mean, you basically, for us, metadata essentially means, you know, if it's a structured data, it, it tells us what are the, what is the table structure, what are the fields, what type of data is in the fields, <coughs> et cetera. And that is a great way of understanding the security profile of the data. So for example, you know, there have been lots of databases built over the years where the social security number was used as the customer ID. Mm. Lots of databases. I mean, it was very common until about 10, 15 years ago when people became more conscious that, mm. oh my goodness, that's that, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. But people have applications running which are 30 years old now sure. that all have that right now. So now the, the, the field might be called as <coughs> customer ID, mm -hmm. but in reality, it's a social security number. And you would never know that unless you profile that data. Mm -hmm. And you realize, wow, they're all nine digits, and they're all within the right range, and then once you get deep down, you realize that's a social security number, and therefore it needs to be protected. Mm -hmm. So that's the approach that we are taking, is to say, let's profile the data, draw the metadata, and for customers who have been using our tools, the metadata has already exist there, but this can be done for any database. I mean, virtually every database, ev any, any structured data repository. And then, of course, when it comes to semi-structured and unstructured data, it is really being able to understand the schema, if you will, right? Mm -hmm. Understand the metadata. And of course, as you know, there's a lot of uh, activity in the market right now on how to be able to do that using machine learning, using a lot of new techniques. So we believe that that technique can be extend extended to a lot of other data types. Mm -hmm.